in Exodus, the first chapter, there's a resemblance of what happened to the Jews in Germany. The, the first chapter of Exodus is, is reflecting, almost pro prophesying the state of the Jews in, in Germany. During that time, there was believing Gentiles that protected Jews, but they had to lie. They had to lie to the authorities. Right. And right. We, see, we even see that in the first chapter of Exodus. We see hmm. two women that were willing to risk their life and lie to the king. This story resembles a different story of another woman hmm. that could have could have gave up to Jewish spies, but she, she was lying to the authority in order to save lives. And we're talking about Rahab. Now, Rahab is begging the spies to save her when they conquer Jericho. So we have the doorpost, we have the blood, we have the scarlet, mm -hmm. we have the, the color red, the scarlet card, so we can see it. We can see the red sign and we'll pass over and you. we'll pass over you <laughs> or, or we'll protect you. Actually, I've never actually put that together of the Passover story, even inside of Rahab's story. It's beautiful. You're listening to Pod for Israel. For more information, go to oneforisrael.org. I want to welcome you back to Pod for Israel and I have again with me Dr. Golan Broshi. And we're going to be digging into some really interesting stuff. We're going to talk about harlots. We're going to talk about scarlet cords. We're going to talk about the Holocaust and we're going to talk about Passover again. And so we just finished up Passover just now, but before we dive into all that juicy stuff, you wanted to dive into the comments. We had a lot of comments to uh, the Cain and Abel, you know, the first right. murder and, the, and, and, and Yeshua, Yeshua in the Torah. We had a lot of comments and I, I just want to pick two of them. And by the way, we're thankful for the comments. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we appreciate it, the, the time you took to write and, and, and comment uh, for the podcast. But I want to take two. First, uh, the, the, one of the comments said, uh, who do you think you are? I mean, you mm. think you're so smart that you you came up with the idea that, that, that Abel reflects Yeshua, resembles Yeshua, the Messiah. How smart do you think nobody saw it before you? How is it possible? That's what one of the commentators said. And, and I want to emphasize that we said in the podcast <laughs> that Christian scholars saw before us. We, yeah. we, they, they saw the, the figure of Abel yeah. as the prototype of Yeshua, of Jesus, the Messiah. They, we, we said in the podcast that Christian scholars saw it. This is yeah. not, I, the, not our idea. We just expanded on it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And at the same time, it's like, okay. Is, is God's word bound? Uh, did it stop at Luther? Did it stop at, you know, uh, like Calvin? Did it stop at, you know, just Spurgeon, whatever, name your favorite pastor or whatever, <laughs> teacher, commentator. I mean, I, I think that God is revealing, you know, new so things you, all the so time, you're new saying insights. Even if it was something new, yeah, come you, on. you shouldn't condemn it. Absolutely. But, but in this case, the scholars saw it before us. We just expanded yeah. on it with, with, with the Hebrew text. You know, I always wonder... Again, you know, what was Yeshua saying to the disciples as they walked along the road to Emmaus? And I think it's like, if only I could have listened in on that conversation. If only he <laughs> would have recorded. Why couldn't they just have re recorded those words that he spoke to him? All the different references, because yeah. it said he opened up through the Torah and explained it all to them. You know, I kind of always, I really also think, especially during the season of Passover, like how much you could say the, the church has missed for so long. It's kind of like, uh, in some ways, there's been a, an exile for thousands of years, too, of the church away from the roots of our faith. And so, gosh, yeah, I, you know, I would kind of expect quite a lot of interesting, probably, again, not new. It's just, it's renewed. It's coming out again exactly. for us today. It's revealed again for us. And we continue to find over and over again these beautiful revelations Yes, that so that's us. one comment. Another comment said, uh, quite bluntly, said, <laughs> you're lying. You're lying yeah, because yeah, you yeah. said God uh, God uh, did something to Abel with one root and did something for his brother with a different root, but my Bible says it's the same root. And, the, and if you, if you and can... We're, and we're diving into the actual it, Hebrew here, into it, the Hebrew Torah. It's Genesis, and I'm talking about Genesis 4, verses 4 and 5. So it says... God respected Abel. Does it say in English, God respected the uh, the, the actual yeah. word? Respected. And for Cain, the same word. Now, now, I, I actually personally, I personally wrote back to this commentator and told him, 
I think you missed our point. Our point was to make a nice midrash of words. And why is that? You you are right that this with with, with the current punctuation system, with the current punctuation system, the two words vaisha in Hebrew vaisha and then sha'a, the two words me are coming from the same root. Right. But the problem with the punctuation system is that the punctuation system comes at least 2,000 years after the text was written by Moses. And let, let me clarify a little bit for our, our English audience who doesn't understand Hebrew so much. Hebrew consists of, you have your vowels. The vowels are the punctuation. So, you know, we're typically thinking punctuation like periods and commas and so forth like that. In Hebrew, the vowels are punctuation points. Those are the little dots underneath the Hebrew characters or dots to the side and so forth yeah. like that. And that can dramatically change what the word is. You can have the same, you know, consonants, you could say, non-vowels characters. And then with different vowels, it could totally change the word. Yeah, so, and there's, But they're saying for 2000, it was actually 2000 years after Moses that we had the vowels recorded. Yeah, the a family from Tiberias, the family that called Ben Asher, you know, a guy named Ben Asher and his family right. did the punctuation something like 1,000 years ago from today, which means it's at least 2,000 years after Moses wrote the, 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 the original text. Hmm. So, it's, so, so in the original, what they read in the synagogues today doesn't have any punctuation. So yeah. and the, and this is why the, the the word used for Abel when God vaisha God came to Abel respected him with a different like, j a slight change with the punctuation can mean a different root and that was the nice right. midrash that we wanted to 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 to, to make across to, to to bring across that if you change this the punctuation the letters say the same the, the the verb completely changes and the root changes and we have an example really from the Bible we have I mean you you got to have the Hebrew text in front of you but I'm gonna ask you to read from Second Samuel Second Samuel eight verse verse six okay then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus and the Syrians became David's servants and brought tribute so the Lord preserved David wherever he went so what did the Lord do <clears throat> Preserved. Preserved. Now, the word in Hebrew, it says, Vayosha. It's the, exactly the same letters as what God did to Abel offering, to Abel's offering. Hmm. The same four-letter word, but it, with a different punctuation. I'm going to say it slowly in Hebrew. In Genesis, it says, Vaisha. In, in, in 2 Samuel, it says, Vayosha. So it sounds a little bit different because hmm. of the punctuation, but the word looks the same. Yeah. So and and in Second Samuel, the verb and the and and the root is salvation, Yeshua, Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. from the root right. we have salvation, and that's why we did a nice midrashic play of, on words with with Genesis. So we didn't we didn't lie, we didn't mislead anybody. We said it's a nice midrash because of the punctuation. Right. If you just change slightly the punctuation, the verb and the root can mean completely uh, two different things. And so like as, as you know, throughout the years before the punctuation came in, which was written, you know, actually developed in Tiberias, before the punctuation came, how did people interpret those words? It was context, it was the... Exactly, and we have, we have recorded even in the Talmud, and they use the Masoretic text. Even in the Masoretic text, they had a debate that the sages, the, the, the wise disciples, the, the rabbis had a debate how to, how to pronounce certain words yeah. because there was no vowels. Yeah, no, so vowel, some no punctuations. Clear. In some cases, you you can be really clear in the context, but in other cases, it's a, it's a debate. It's a kind of a little open because, guys, it's been around for a long time. <laughs> one final thing. There's a bunch of scammers that are impersonating One for Israel, trying to get people to donate on like WhatsApp or some weird thing. We'll never ask you to do that. Please ignore those people. Report them as spam and so forth. So don't worry mm -hmm. about it. Just skip by that. We'll never send you a link other than One for Israel. So just to be clear. So these couple of, of two, you know, we just finished Passover, the holiday. This coming two weeks are really special in the in the Jewish and Israeli calendar because this week we mentioned the, the Holocaust, uh, how do you call it, the Memorial Day, the Holocaust Memorial Day. Yeah, Yom HaShoah. I think it's uh, the Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. And the next week there's Independence Day, the Memorial Day for soldiers, and, and then the Independence. So there's two weeks. This week is the M Memorial Day for the Holocaust. 
and uh, one week later is the, the the Independence Day. So we wanna right. we, we wanna share a few things about the um, uh, the, the Holocaust and show a little bit of uh, interesting uh, Hebrew uh, Hebrew uh, points with uh, with Rahab right. and the delivery the delivery of Israel from Egypt. So first, so Passover just finished, but you're saying Holocaust Memorial has a lot to do with Passover. And I'll tell you what, I had a lovely, lovely professor, a lady, secular Jew, <coughs> secular right. Jew, didn't believe, didn't believe in, in God, let alone in Yeshua. But she said, you know, the Bible is written in such a, she said herself, even though she was a secular, she was a, like a 70 year old, lovely professor in, in the university. And she said, who, who can write this? If not, if not supernatural, even though she didn't believe hmm. in the supernatural, she, she, she was, she was teaching us from the Torah. You know, and, and, and she said, who can write this? Even she was overwhelmed with the biblical Hebrew. And she said, just a human author couldn't write it by himself without, mm. she couldn't figure it out. How is it written so beautifully? And she said, in Exodus, the first chapter, there's a resemblance of what happened to the Jews in Germany just before the Holocaust. Wow. We're talking about Germany, the, the 20th century, you know, for 1930. Until then, the Jews in Germany had a beautiful life. Right. They were accepted. They were in high positions. The prosperous. Jews in Germany, yeah. really prosperous. Right. And she said, if you read, this professor told us, if you read Exodus, the first chapter, you see that how did the Israelites live under, under Joseph and Pharaoh in Egypt? Really well. Pretty Pharaoh well, said, right? Take the best of the land, whatever yeah. you like. But then something something happened in verse 8. And I'm talking about uh, Exodus, uh, right. the, the first chapter, verse 8. A new king arose. Right. A new king came that did not know Joseph. Hmm. And we know what happened in Germany in the 30s. A new ruler came, right. which hated the Jews. We don't even have to mention his name, you know. Exactly. Uh, and you really came, didn't not only did not like the Jews, but hated them. Yeah. So what did Pharaoh do? First of all, this Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph. First thing he said, let's put tax. Special tax, taxes, yeah, taxes. Yeah, taxes. Yeah, yeah taxes on the Jews. Special right. taxes. Wow. And that's exactly what happened in Germany. First, yeah. let's just put taxes, make make them pay a little more hmm. because they're not, not one of us. They could, they could always betray us, right? If there's a war or something, we can't trust them. Yeah, that's literally what, yeah, that's literally the campaign is, oh, they're working for the other side. They're going to betray us. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even though they put a lot of taxes <clears throat> on the Jews, even in, in Exodus and in Germany, it didn't, it didn't work. They prospered so, still. So, so what happened? So what did Pharaoh say? Let's make them slaves. Mm. Now they can only work under what we give them. Only certain jobs Jews are allowed to do. And what certain happened in jobs, Germany? And in Germany, of course, the same thing. Only yeah. certain well, jobs. And not only that, they, they, we're going we're gonna to close them up. They're going to live in, 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 in... We're not going to mix with them. We're not going to mix with the Jews, Pharaoh said. Hmm. They're going to live in a separate ghettos, you can say. The Goshen ghetto? Yeah, hmm. exactly. We're not going to... They're filthy. <laughs> We're not gonna. We don't want to touch them. We don't want to wow. do anything with them. So we they're gonna live in the separate places, <laughs> exactly like in Germany. But even that wasn't the end. Wow. And Pharaoh decided he's gonna kill. He's gonna destroy. He's it's gonna a genocide. Exactly. And of course, we know this professor told us that happens exactly the same in Germany. You know, step by step, step by step. Yeah. And and and, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, there was salvation from Egypt. Amen. To a promised land. Amen. Right? <laughs> and but likewise in our day. And 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 after the, the horrors of the Holocaust, just a few years later, mm -hmm. there was a, a revival of the of, of the land, and Israel finally got got a state, got the Jewish state. So this professor wanted to show us how the, the first chapter of Exodus is is reflecting almost pro prophesying the states uh, the, the the state of the Jews under the and un, un, in, in Germany under the Nazi uh, the Nazi um, occupation I had such a good conversation with my kids last night on this exact thing you know, we read through the Bible in a year 
And I encourage all you fathers to do it. Take the time, man up, sit with your kids. They, they love it. And so we read through the Torah. We were, we were reading in Deuteronomy 30. And mm. it's the part where, you know, Moses is really prophesying at this point, knowing that they will reject the covenant, knowing that they will do wrong and, and telling them that God has a place of repentance for you. And, you know, here he says that, and you will return to the Lord, your God and obey his voice. According to all that I command you today, you and your children with all of your heart and all your soul. And the Lord, your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you from all the nations where the Lord, your God has scattered you. If any of you are driven out from the furthest parts under heaven from there, the Lord, your God will gather you. And from there, he will bring you. Amen. Then the Lord, your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed and you'll possess it. And I just, I was, I was telling my kids last night, do you guys understand this? Do you understand you're, you're living you're in living the middle in. of that fulfilled in our day. This is not just a common era. This is so beautiful to see God's promises fulfilled. I hope that encourages your heart. And I was telling them the story of a friend of mine who his wife was in the furthest after the Holocaust, her father fled disowned his Judaism, everything just said, I don't want, I don't want anything to do with it. I want to, I want to run away. I'll be secular. And he was in the furthest tip of Russia, almost touching Alaska. Wow. And there his daughter started to ask, what's a Jew? Are we Jews of her own fruition? And he started to explain. And then immediately she said, I want a Bible. And then after that wow. became a believer. And then what's the next thing? I want to go to Israel. Then the iron curtain dropped. Then she's back. And it was like, guys, do you understand? This is so beautiful. God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness and his grace abounding today. Wow. What a, what a beautiful and, parallel. And you know, in, in the Holocaust, you know, praise the Lord that during that time, there was believing Gentiles that protected Jews, saved Amen. Jews, but they Amen. had to lie. They had to lie to the authorities. Right. And right. we see, we even see that in the first chapter of Exodus. We see hmm. two women that were willing to risk their life and lie to the king in order to save Jewish babies. These are the midwives. We read it. If you can read over the Exodus, the first chapter, and it's uh, and it's the um, from verses uh, fifteen. You can read from fifteen. So the king told them. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Sapphira and the other Pua. And he said, when you do the duties of a midwife for Hebrew women and see them on their birth stools, if it's a son, you will kill him. But if it's a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them. And then? But saved the male children alive. So the king called for the midwives and said, why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, Oh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they're lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. And the, what did God do? Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives right. and the people multiplied and grew very So mighty. sometimes, you know, and of course we, we, we see it in the Bible and in the Holocaust, you have two values, two values that are confronted with each other, the value of truth <clears throat> Versus the value of life. What do you right. do when when it comes to, when there's a battle between them? What do you choose? And they chose life. They chose yeah. to lie to the to the authorities to the to the evil king, and to save Jewish babies. Yeah, it's and this is this is exactly what countless of of believing Gentiles did in Hungary, mm. in Holland, in Germany to save in Poland to save Jewish souls from the authorities. It, it reminds me of uh, Yeshua's uh, exhortation, be as shrewd as snakes, but as innocent as exactly. doves. And this story resembles a different story of another woman hmm. that could have, could have gave up two Israeli, two Jewish spies, but, had, but, but lied to the king, lied to the king in order to save them. And we're talking about Rahab, yeah, and we're, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you later why why we mention her because her story resembles the Exodus in many many ways. And wow. one of the ways she had she was willing to lie as well. And I'm gonna ask you to read from from Joshua the second chapter, verse 
Four, so she's hiding the two Jewish spies that are coming to Jericho. And when the, when the king or the soldiers of the king are coming to, to, to catch them, what does she do? Verses, verses four. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, yes, the men came to me, but I don't know where they were from. And it happened as the gate was being shut when it was dark that the men went out. Where the men went, I don't know. Pursue them quickly, for you'll overtake them. Yeah. But she had brought them up to the roof and hidden them with stalks of flax, yeah. which she had laid in order on the roof. So like the two, uh, how do you call the two miss? Uh, how do you call two the midwives. two yeah, midwives? Yeah. Rahab also lied in order to save Jewish lives. Hmm. She, she was lying to the authority. Yeah. In order to save lives. It was the fear of the Lord. Exactly. It was the it was the faith in the God of Israel that was preserving life. Now we see yeah. the story, the story of, you know, who wrote, who do we believe wrote the book of Joshua? Well, some people say Joshua. Joshua. Yeah. And I believe Joshua wrote it. Now, mm -hmm. who wrote Exodus, the Torah? Moses. Moses. Now, Joshua was a disciple. Of Moses, right. So we we can expect that if 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 Joshua is writing the story of Rahab, and is planting hints of the Exodus, we know he learned it from his from his teacher. You, you know, I I, I want to go even further and just say who wrote the whole of Scripture? God did. I mean, because God set all these God God opened Rahab's heart to hear these stories and fear the Lord, and to hear these stories and and. Long for that salvation, long to be close to that God of Israel. Amen. So, I mean, it, it's it's amazing how He set all these things up. So, but we, I, I want I want to show you a few a few resembling thoughts with Rahab and the and the, the story of Jericho, and the story of the Exodus. So, first first thing, the it says in on verse four, Joshua Joshua two four, that the the woman Rahab took the two people, and then what she what did she do in English? What what did it say? She hid them. What did what does it say? Yeah, she had brought them up on the roof and hidden them. Hidden them. Now the word in Hebrew is tatspino. 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 To okay. uh, we, we get we get this uh, from this word in Hebrew we get campus. Uh, uh, not campus. How do you say that? So you can see the north. Compass. Uh, compass. Yeah. yeah, the same. It's the same word. The north. We get the the, the word north. It's for, from the same root, hmm. but she hid them, and it's the same. It, it's it's a rare, uh, really rare word, and it's the same word that appears in Exodus the second chapter when uh, Yocheved, the mother of Moses, mm. is hitting him for three months, and wow. it says vatatspineu. So the hmm. same rare word for hide for hiding somebody. So uh, Moses was hidden for three months, and, the, and and Rahab hid the two uh, the two the two spies with the same word tatspino and tatspineu. We uh, so, so here we see we, we see a clear hint with, with the really uh, rare Hebrew word used for for Rahab do, saving the two uh, the two spies, and mm. uh, Moses's mother Yocheved uh, uh, hitting him for three uh, for three uh, for three months. Now, another thing, it says they came at night. Hmm. Halayla, it says, it says in Hebrew, right. Halayla. Uh, it says at the night, Halayla. And again, this is, the, it appears in Exodus, the 12th chapter. The 12th chapter is the, the, the chapter of the, the firstborn is being killed and Israel is fleeing from, uh, is fleeing from Egypt in right. the night. Halayla, right. Halayla again, the night. The night appears in, in, in Joshua's story, in the story mm. of Rahab, and in the story of the Exodus. But, and, and this is, the, and this is the, the, the best part, not only that she hid them with the same word, not only that she had to lie in order to hid them, what was the right. reason that she protected them? Why did she hide them? What is she saying to, uh, to, to the two spies in Joshua, the, the second chapter? What is she saying from verse 9? Yeah, here she says, Now before they laid down, she came up to them on the roof, roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. 
For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. So <clears throat> she heard yeah. this story. Rahab heard exactly. this story of the Exodus. She heard this story. So we, we don't only hear, uh, we don't only see clues in the text for the Exodus stories. We see the actual story being repeated by Rahab. This is, this yeah. is the reason. And she heard what God has done. And, and then you want me to just continue from there? Yeah. So... For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now, therefore, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show kindness to my father's yes. house and give me a true token and spare my father, my mother, and my brothers and sisters so, and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. So the whole incentive, the whole the whole uh, motivation for her, for her saving the two spies was because she was fearing the God of Israel and yeah. she heard of what God did to the Egyptians. She heard of the Exodus. Now, where does it say that she hid the two spies? And, and again, it's verse... Uh, I think yeah. it's verse four. Mm -hmm. she Excuse me, them, verse uh, six. She hid them on the roof with stalks of flax. With stalks. So not only on the roof, but in the stalks. No, no, what, what's that word in Hebrew? Well, it says a flax. I don't have the Hebrew in front well, of well, what the, and the, in, Excuse me, in English. What does it mean in English? Stalks of flax. Well, what, what's that? It's a, it's a grain. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's some kind of a grain. Now, the same thing, you know, with Moses. Where did, where did, is it? Is it his sister that put him? Let's see. Yeah. In, in Exodus, the second chapter, uh, it says she put him in a in in, in a small did. in a small yeah. boat. Uh, yeah, his mother, a small uh, small ark, and she put him where? It says in Hebrew, not on the water. She just didn't put Moses just in the water so he can float. Where did she put Moses? And it's 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 Exodus, the the first the first uh, excuse me Exodus two, verse three. They 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 uh, they put Moses not just on the water, but where? Okay, she took an ark of bulrushes, yes. dabbed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child on it, and laid it in the reeds by the riverbank. In the reeds. So again, we have we have uh, we have um, um, Moses's mother, which hides him in the how do you say reeds? Reeds. 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 And we have Rahab that hides. The, she just. She just. She. Uh, she doesn't just put them on the on the roof. She hides them on the roof in a special. In 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 you know in a special place. Uh, as as we read in in Joshua the second chapter, uh, verse uh, verse six. So again we have a hint of uh, it's 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 not just they throw him okay just hide or something. They really do a good job in hiding yeah. him in yeah. hiding them in a special place. But it gets even better than that. Mm. You know, the, the, the whole ox, uh, Exodus, Exodus story is, is what, how, did, how did the destroyer pass over the, the, the Israelis, the, the, Israel, the, 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 Israel, the Israel house, uh, houses in Egypt? How did, he, how did he not go in? What did they do? What did they do in order to mark their posts? They, they basically took the blood of the lamb and they painted... Uh, mm -hmm. On the lintels of the door. Well, what, what kind of paint was it? What, what, what the paint of what? what is Blood. It? it was red. Red, right? Red. Now, Rahab is begging the spies to save her when they conquer Jericho. Yeah, so the men said to her, we will be well, blameless you of this oath. Tell everybody, where do you read it? Yeah, Joshua 2.17. 2, so the men said to her, we will be blameless of this oath of yours, which you have made us swear, unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window, through which you let us down. Scarlet. What is scarlet? Red. Red. So, but re, please hang a, ru, a, a red. It's like a blood red. Yeah. A blood red, and and we'll see the blood in a minute, in verse nineteen. Yeah, you'll bind it on the scarlet cord on your window through which you let us down, and unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to your home, to your own home. So it shall be that whoever goes outside the doors of your the house doors. into the street, Remember his the blood doors. shall be on his own head and we his will be guilty. His blood. You see? So we have the doorpost. We have the blood. We have the scarlet. Mm -hmm. We have the, the color red. 
And then, okay, you keep reading 19. And whoever's with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head if a hand is laid on him. And if you tell this business of ours, then we will be free from your oath, which you made us swear. And 21. So she, so said, she said, according to your words, so be it. And she sent them away. And when they departed, she bound the scarlet cord in the window. So we see again the resemblance to the Exodus, not only with the, with, with the Hebrew small hints and with the whole theme, because Rahab is recalling the Exodus. We see, what do they tell her? You can save yourself and everybody that is going to be in your house with one condition, which is? The scarlet cord. The scarlet cord. So we can see it. We can see the red sign. And we'll pass over And you. we'll pass over you. <laughs> or, or we'll protect you, or actually, is more you. Because they're claiming ex- protection. And that's exactly what they did. If you read, uh, if you read here, uh, if you read Joshua uh, uh, 6, Joshua 6, um, seven, verse 17, just okay. verse 17. So verse 17. Yeah, Joshua is saying to Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all who are in in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And verse 21. Oh, excuse me. We're verse 22. Okay, in verse 22. But Joshua said to the two men who spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you swore to her. And 23rd, the last one. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all of her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. So they spared her. They saved her because of that red sign on the post, on the window. You know what's really amazing? I've always thought of this and said, wow, that was really awesome. (laughs) So they marched around the walls. Okay. And we all know the story of Joshua. At the and Battle where did Rahab, uh, Rahab lived? Her house was? On the wall. On the wall. Because it said, and the walls came tumbling down. But to me, I one just kind of think yeah. that there was a little tower left over. Because exactly. one section of the wall, I mean, unless God just you know made it come down perfectly with, without destroying the little home that they're in, somehow. <laughs> As you saw these huge walls just crashing down, there'd just be one, you know, did they have to climb down from the rubble? Mm. It, it, it's absolutely amazing that so improbable, one, for the walls to crash down, but second of all, for all those walls to crash down, but yet her house remains protected. It's beautiful. And it, and it gets even better than that, if you can imagine. Because what Rahab did, what Rahab this unbelievable wow. uh, uh, selfless, uh, selfless deed that she she put she lied to the authorities she hid the 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 the, the jewish two spies to protect them to save them hmm. and she she believed she had the faith to believe the god of the hebrews the 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 the, 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 the almost the gospel yeah? yeah she she believed she believed and she was saved and her name was entered to the dynasty of the Savior, of Yeshua. Yeah, yeah it's Because beautiful. we read in Matthew. She's in Matthew. You know, if you read from the Gospel of and, Matthew. And it's interesting, when you read through the genealogies, they're, they, they're typically not mentioning the women. It's just usually the, the line of men. Yep. But they single her out. God really wanted to show that off. He wanted to show that lineage there. Yeah, look what happens when you're saving Jewish souls. <laughs> All right. And it's in, in, in Matthew chapter 1, you can read from verse 5. Okay, in Matthew chapter 1. 1, 5. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Yes, so Boaz, Boaz, the husband of Ruth, Boaz is the son of Rahab. So Rahab married a Jewish guy. Imagine. And it's beautiful. You have a harlot. You have two Gentile women that are very purposely called out and mentioned. Uh, ones that are vener- highly venerated and in, in e- even you know throughout the Torah. It's like these two women, Rahab and Ruth, were singled out because then it goes Obed begot Jesse and Jesse begot David, David begot Solomon. You know, it, it, it's amazing. So <laughs> you have them pulled out. 
Yeah, we have two other women, Bathsheba and, t- and, yeah. and Tamar. Tamar exactly. the, also mentioned, and Tamar was 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 costumed as a harlot, right? To yeah, yeah. for Judah. Yeah. So Tamar also is was kind of in Judah eyes. And, and Tamar Bathsheba was, had a and big Bathsheba, controversy as well. Yeah. But but God pulls out those controversies to show his redemptive but, but power. Imagine and faith. this. Rahab is a harlot, she's a Gentile, mm. she's rescuing Jews, <laughs> even willing to lie. To, to, you, you to know, put her life at To risk. put her life on, on the Big line. Time. And she, then she's, she goes on to marry one of the Jews, one of the Israelis, named Salmon. You, you read mm-hmm. his name in, in, yeah. in verse 5? And, 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 and her son is named Boaz. And Boaz married, m- marries another woman that joined by faith mm. to Israel, Ruth. It's beautiful. Which is, so, 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 so Boaz's mother is not Jewish. <laughs> and Boa's wife is not Jewish, but both of them are, 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 are grafted in. Grafted in, and yeah. David is coming forth from both of them. Wow. King David, and of course, the, the, the king of the Jews, Yeshua the Messiah, salvation himself is <laughs> coming. So Rahab, that brought salvation to the two spies, brought salvation to the world, you can say, from wow. her own genealogy. That's beautiful. Can, can you imagine that? Such a beautiful What story. did she do? She just hide two spies. <laughs> she believed. Can you imagine that? These are great stories to share in the middle of Passover. You would never think that. Uh, I, I, I never actually put that together of the whole, the whole thing of the Passover story, even inside of Rahab's story. It's beautiful. And, and, you, can, and you can figure why, why, because again, if Joshua wrote it and Joshua was a disciple of Moses and it's, it says in the Torah that he didn't go out of the tent. He wanted to be with Moses mm. all the time. He learned from him. Mm. So it's, it's only, it's only you, you, you can only predict that he's going to write and he's going to put Moses' words in his words, in Joshua's words. So it all has come back together, you know, salvation, uh, faith, it's beautiful. the Jewish people, you know, if you're grafted in, you're grafted in and look what happens from, from a harlot. Wow. And again, with the two, with the two mid, uh, midwives, yeah, exactly the same thing. And God, God did good things to them. Yeah, he gave they, them a household. Yeah, and, they were and willing to risk their lives and not kill Jewish babies. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Rahab didn't want to kill two spies, which were probably nothing for her, right? Yeah, they would have. They wouldn't have just stopped killing just Rahab. They would have taken her whole family out for wipe, betraying. Wipe them, the, wipe them off. Yeah. yeah. But what if? What the if city, they? Yeah. What if you know? What if the soldiers of the king caught the two spies and caught That's Rahab lying? It would have been her and her whole family would have died. But instead, but by the act of faith. And that's that's literally what happened in Germany. It, it wasn't just that you know if you hid Jews, you were you were going to to you know to the concentration camps yeah. and stuff. It was your whole family would go to destroy. You would lose everything. Yeah, you risk you and your family would be gone. So I mean, like the like Corey Tinnenboom, these 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 great amazing people who who took it took that risk, who stood up in faith. And we have to ask ourselves today: Are are we willing to do that? You know, like as we come into the Holocaust Memorial Day, it's like, it's good to, to say, Lord, prepare my heart to be like Rahab, prepare my heart to, to be willing to pay that cost. And so, yeah, you know, guys, as we, uh, as we finish up this Passover week, I know some of you guys are celebrating Resurrection Sunday. And as we reflect on what our Messiah has done, and we also just it's amazing to look through and see the story of salvation in such a rich format. Wow. It didn't start just 2,000 years ago with Yeshua. He's been weaving this gospel story all through history. And working through the faith of simple, rejected people, yeah. even women as we saw in Egypt, hmm. in Jericho, hmm. simple women, you know, unwanted women yeah. with... And, and, and God is working through them. And look, her name is now, you know, it's like, it's like the woman that was, that was whipping with the, with, with, with Yeshua, on Yeshua's feet with her hair. Mm-hmm. And the disciples were, well, what are you doing with the perfume? And, and he said, you tell, you tell her story. Now the whole world will hear what she did yeah, to me. Everywhere the gospels preach, the, her story will be told. So everywhere the gospel preached, we, we're wow. going to hear about Rahab. 
That's beautiful. We're going to hear about Rahab that risked her life mm -hmm. in faith of this God, this amazing wow. God, to bring salvation not only to her family, but mm -hmm. to the whole, every, every family of the, uh, of, of the earth through Yeshua the Messiah. Amen? Amen. Well, may you guys be blessed on this Feast of First Fruits as we celebrate the first fruits of the resurrection, Yeshua, our Messiah. And we just pray also that you would be blessed throughout this week. Would you share, would you be bold to share the gospel first? That you would bring, like Rahab, to bring life to those around you and that you would be bold to share the gospel. Uh, share this podcast. Hopefully that will encourage and strengthen the faith of those around you that haven't heard this message. I just think it's so amazing. I uh, just hearing it myself, uh, some of those things for the first time and may you be blessed this week and may the Lord bless your witness in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.